What is going on YouTube? It's Andrea here at VW Family Farm and thank you for joining me for another video. Today it's cold here, it's rainy, it's supposed to possibly ice or snow a little bit tonight. It's just yucky. It's the dead of winter here so it's expected right? But I'm sitting here dreaming about seeds and vegetables and chickens and all the kinds of stuff that spring brings. Baby chicks. So I have been doing some research because this year I want to add some color to our egg collection, egg palette, whatever you want to call it. And there's so many terms out there that I'm thinking, what kind of chickens do I even want? I don't know. Do I want olive eggers, Americanas? What am I supposed to get? I have no idea. There's all of these terms floating around. And so I've been doing research just to sort it all out. And I thought some of y'all might be in the same boat that you're like, I don't know when people say this breed of chicken, what they're really referring to. So I'm going to share what I've learned with y'all today. So stay tuned and come along with me. And I'm just going to talk to you for a few minutes about chicken breeds. Okay, so first off, let's start with the different kinds of chickens that lay the colorful eggs. The blues and greens and lavenders and pinks and all that. Up till now, we have buff Orpingtons and they like, lay like a light colored pinkish egg, I'd say. And the kids have bovin browns. They lay a really dark egg. So that's what we have right now. But I'm looking to add in what is called some Easter Eggers this year. Now, as I started researching, that's a really, really broad term. That's almost as broad as just saying chicken. So, let's dive right into this. The first type I want to talk to you about is the Aracana. And I want to show you how that is spelled. This is a really technical screen I'm about to go to to show you how to spell Aracana. So, stay tuned for this high-tech stuff. Okay, this is how you spell Aracana. So if you are looking to get full-fledged, not hybrids, purebred Araconas, that is how it should be spelled. Do not get anything that the spelling's been tinkered with at all. If it has an I in the name, that's not a true Aracona. If you're looking for a true bred Aracona. Now let me tell you a few things about Araconas, okay? Araconas have tufts, that's what they're called. You will see it right below their ears. It's not coming out the skin. It's coming out a little body part they have there and it's kind of sticking straight out. You can't miss it. It's pronounced. Okay, they're kind of just hanging out the side of their head. They have tufts and they, they are what they call rumpless. That means their back end kind of just comes to a stop. They don't have the fluffy feathers like other chickens have going up or down or anything. It just kind of, it's just nice and just comes to a stop right there. Okay, however, the tuft gene, and I've seen where they, they think the rumpless gene too, I don't know for a fact on that one, can be lethal. So if like both parents pass that on to the offspring, it's lethal and the chicks will die within like a couple weeks of being hatched or they might just be dead in the shell. Okay, I'm not going to go into it any more than that because that's, that's my basic understanding of it, but that's why they're kind of rare to have purebred Araconas. Um, to find those because they have that lethal gene and they're kind of hard to raise. Okay? They started being developed um, cross between some chickens in like the 30s and then by like the 70s they were recognized as their own breed by the American Poultry Association. So that's a little bit about the Aracana. A few other things. There's a gene that will make a chicken like an Aracana, Americana, Easter Egg or those type chickens to have what is called a beard and muff. Now a beard and muff is the beard is going to be like under the chin where a beard would be and the muff is going to be kind of like under the eyes. Think of like lamb chop sideburns in a man and they're going to kind of stick horizontally stick straight out. Okay. Those are 
caused by one gene. So if a chicken has a beard, they have a muff. If they have a muff, they have a beard. Well, Araconas don't have that gene, so they're not going to have that. And they're going to have like green or willow colored legs. So those are some signs to look for a true Aracana, okay? Now, some colors you find Araconas in. Let me give you some colors. If you think you've got Araconas, here's some colors that they might be, like their feathers is what I'm talking about. And I'm reading this because I don't want to get this wrong. Gold, duckwing, silver duckwing, and white. Those are the colors of true Americanas. And Americanas breed true. Now, I wrote down the definition of breeding true. It means purebred chicks where they resemble both parents. That, that's what breeding true means in the chicken world. So I'm trying to give you all some basic chicken concepts today because some of these things I just learned and we've had chickens for years. Okay, let's move on to... Americanas. Oh, back up just a second. Araconas also can be black or black breasted red. I didn't say that on their feathers. So let's move on to Americanas. Now here's where it gets tricky. Araconas are pretty rare in the U.S., but Americanas are not. And Americana, let's go back to the technical screen, that's what Americana looks like. Now you will see people tinker with this word and make it spelled like America with, you know, obviously the NAS on the end. Uh, they will put an I. So if this word has been tinkered with at all, you're not getting a true Americana. Now, you may not care about that, which I actually, actually don't care about myself, but there's a lot of people that show chickens. And if you're wanting to show Americanas, you need to make sure you're getting Americanas because uh, they will have some slight differences that if you enter them in a show, will stand out that those are not true Americanas. So let's talk about Americanas for a second. They're, like I said, they are more common, but you probably need to get them through a real reputable breeder. Because if someone's just telling you they're Americanas, you might not be getting true Americanas. Okay, they were recognized, they're a descendant of the Aracana, different strains of Araconas, and they were recognized as a breed in the 80s, okay? So they're an actual official breed by the American Poultry Association. Okay, where Araconas are rumpless, Americanas do have the full tail, and Americanas have the breed and tufts that I was telling you about. So you will see that um, on Americanas. Sometimes pictures I've seen, they kind of run together on their face, and that's actually coming out of their face. I told you the tufts were coming out of a little body part on the side of their head, which I'm not even going to try to pronounce. But the beard and muffs, that's actually coming out of the face skin on the chicken, okay? Their legs are going to be slate or black colored on a true Americana, okay? Okay, the feather colors in true Americanas, and I'm going to read these to you so I don't mess it up, are black, blue, blue wheaten, brown red, silver wheaten, and white, okay? So that's the colors of a true Americana. All right, Americanas and Araconas both have white skin. So if you're trying to look and if your, yours doesn't have white skin, you probably don't have a true Americana. Now let's talk about Easter Eggers because that's the route I'm going to be going because I'm just doing this for fun and beauty. I love chickens. I love looking out my window and seeing chickens scratch around and eating bugs and uh, I love hearing roosters crow, and I just like chickens. They're fun to me. My chickens have personalities. I have, I've had some that are scared of you. I've had some that are more aggressive. I've had some that are stubborn that will sit in that nest, and you go to reach under them, they're going to get you, and then some that are gentle as can be. Emily and Lane have had pet chickens that have names and get petted and held, and then they have some that don't want to be touched at all. So I just love chickens. I'm not going for a registered breed. We don't show animals around here. I don't see anything wrong with it. We just don't. We just raise food. So I'm just going for some color and pleasure in my chicken flock. So I'm going to go with Easter eggers. But Easter eggers is basically the term for what you'd call a mutt. It's not a recognized breed of chicken. It's more of a variety of chicken. It is, they were, they're a hybrid, so they don't breed true like the Araconas and Americanas. So you're not going to be able to hatch them and know what you're going to be hatching as far as color and all that. 
um, true Araconas and Americanas, like if you order them from a reputable breeder, they can tell you what they're going to be before you ever even hatch them. Easter Eggers are not that way. They don't know and, and you're not going to know, which is not a problem for me. I don't care. Um, they could have any shell color all the way from aqua to olive to pinkish. They could be dark brown, you know, just plain old blue, plain green, whatever. They can be all kinds of variety of colors. Uh, that's, that's the benefit of them. That's what, why I'm getting them is for the egg colors. Okay. Here's something to look for if you're wanting true Araconas. I told you Araconas had the greenish legs, but no beard and muff. Well, Easter Eggers will have the greenish legs like an Araconas, but they will have the beard and the muff like an Americana who has the black or the slate colored legs. So they're going to have some traits from both. That's because they are descendants. They're going to have a parent that's a descendant of an Americana or Araconas, which Americanas are descendants of Araconas. So you've got that blue egg laying gene because Araconas and Americanas both wet lay blue eggs. That is their trait. They, they have the gene to do that and they always lay blue eggs. Now, an Easter egg is going to have a parent that's a descendant of that, that's going to be a blue egg layer. But then their, what they lay is going to be dependent on what was the other parent. And if you're going for um, depending on what color eggs you're going for, you're going to change the other parent because you're going to have a blue egg layer and something else. Okay. Now the blue egg layer could be anything from, I'm looking at my notes here because I've been learning all this myself, y'all, and I'm just trying to share what I've learned. Could be anything from the cream leg bars. It could be a Americana or an Aricana or it could be the Whiting True Blues. That, that could all be this parent over here. That's the blue egg layer. Now, depending on what you're wanting your eggs to turn out like is what you're gonna do with this parent. So you could choose um, something like um, a Moran or a Welsimer. That's, that's a, that is how you're gonna get like an olive egger. With a Moran, and like a blue egg layer, you're gonna wind up with an olive egg, okay? Some shade in there of olive. Because the Morans and Welsomers are dark brown egg layers, which I want some of those, and I want them to lay the dark brown eggs because I think those are beautiful when they're really dark and chocolatey. And then you take the blue and add it in, and that's how you get the olive egg. So olive eggers are just a, a variety of Easter eggers. They're not like any recognized breed either. They're also a hybrid. Okay, Easter eggers are really hardy and they're a great choice for like a family flock because they're friendly. Um, they're not aggressive. They're just a really good choice to have on your homestead. So that's why I'm choosing them. Their color and conformity in their feathers, that can all vary. So, whereas I listed some colors for the Araconas and Americanas, the Easter Eggers could be all over the map. And that's one thing I like about them. I've seen some of them that I thought, man, that looks like a patchwork quilt. It's beautiful. So, that's what I'm going for is just the beauty and the fun of it, really. So, I hope that helps y'all clear up some of the chicken terms we keep hearing because I keep seeing pictures on like Instagram and different places of people's eggs they're gathering that are all these like chocolatey and then different shades of green from like mint green to like deep like almost the color of my sweater green to like powder blue to like deep aqua blue and then everything in between of course like the browns and the pinks and everything um i love those i don't know it's something about if something can be useful and beautiful i mean that's just even better to me so that's my whole goal is just for fun and pleasure. So, and I guess probably part of it's the weather. I'm sitting here dreaming about spring, but I hope that helps you if you're wanting to get some new chicks this spring. I've actually seen some of these, which these are probably Easter Eggers. Uh, I think they were called Americanas, but I don't know if they were true Americanas at like Tractor Supply and some different places. So just keep your eyes out. Um, if you've got like an animal swap, place to go. Um, those are good places to get them. Anyway, just keep your eyes open. I bet you'll find some. And I just thank you for watching and spending a few minutes with me. I hope that helped you out and that clears up some of the 
chicken terms we keep hearing. We'll see you on the next video. It'll probably be next week. And we appreciate every one of you. And God bless.